80% BREAM recipients received first payment. Good afternoon, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News on 2. The motion on the redelineation of parliamentary and state election division boundaries will be tabled, debated and passed at the current Dewan Rakyat sitting. However, according to Deputy Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi, the actual date to table the motion would be determined after discussions between him as Chief Whip, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak as the Head of Government and Dewan Rakyat Speaker Tan Sri Pandikar Amin Mulia. Pembentangan usul persempadanan semula akan dibawa kepada Dewan Rakyat untuk diperbahaskan dan juga pengundian akan dijalankan sama ada pengundian secara belah bagi atau kaedah suara. Tarikh belum ditentukan untuk pementangan berkenaan kerana terdapat uh, perbahasan uh, titah diraja di Dewan Rakyat dan uh, selepas itu akan ada jawapan daripada menteri-menteri diikuti dengan uh, pementangan bil-bil uh, yang baru, akta-akta yang baru. In a statement on Friday, Election Commission EC Chairman Tan Sri Muhammad Hashim Abdullah said the redelineation exercise had been completed as provided under Article 113, Subsection 10 of the Federal Constitution. The EC's redelineation of electoral boundaries exercise was challenged by many parties in court, which eventually ruled in favour of the Commission. About 80% of this year's 7.2 million one Malaysia People's Aid BRIM recipients have received the first phase of the payment to date. In confirming this, Deputy Finance Minister Dato Othman Aziz said the payment has been made to the eligible recipients through their respective bank accounts beginning from February 26. According to Dato Othman, the Finance Ministry has channeled the money to the banks to be distributed to the recipients' accounts and the disbursements into the bank accounts should be completed by the end of this month. As for those who have not given their bank account information, the vouchers have been distributed to the state development offices and district offices to be distributed to recipients. Recipients receiving BRIM via vouchers may cash the vouchers at any banks in Padang national branches. Dr. Othman, who is also Jerlun Member of Parliament, advised recipients who have not received the aid to be patient as the disbursement process was ongoing until March 31st. He said eligible recipients who failed to receive the first instalment of the aid could submit their appeal to the Inland Revenue Board from April 1st to May 31st, adding that following the appeal, they could expect all payments in August. Felda Naram Satu has been chosen as the first Felda settlement to carry out the first phase of a pilot Musang King cultivation project with a startup of 600 trees. In announcing this, Agriculture and Agrobase Industry Minister Dr. Sri Ahmad Shabri Cheikh said the Musang King durian was a source of new wealth for Malaysians following high demand for its export to foreign countries, especially China. The pioneer project at Felda Naram Satu will become yet another source of income for settlers apart from oil palm cultivation. Uh, kita mengajar mendidik mereka uh, cara tanaman yang betul, uh, jarak yang betul, berapakah uh, jumlah uh, yang sepatutnya bagi setiap satu hektar uh, di sini uh, dan kita mengharapkan uh, dalam masa lima ataupun enam tahun ianya dapat dituai dan memberikan pendapatan tambahan. Uh, di samping keceriaan yang akan diperoleh oleh para penolak Felda di sini. It will also be carried out at five other land schemes, namely Felda Neram Dua, Felda Cerul Satu and Dua, Felda Seberang Tayur, Felda Kerteh Lima, and Felda Kerteh Enam, which will involve an overall 20 hectare area. Datuk Sri Ahmad Shabri told reporters after officiating the Durian Farm Pilot Project hashtag Sumber Kekayaan Baharu at Felda Neram Satu in Kemaman Terengganu yesterday. 
the Ministry of Education has allocated over 219 million ringgit for schooling assistance to primary and secondary school students in Kelantan this year. The aid involves three categories, namely general assistance, special assistance and one of eight. According to the Education Ministry Secretary General, Tato Sri Alias Ahmad, in the general aid category, a total of 54.2 million ringgit distributed to students included per capita grants, special school fees, additional tuition fees, co-curriculum, school sports and preschool food aid. Dato Sri Alas disclosed this in his speech at the Education Outreach Programme at the Pasir Puteh District Education Office in Pasir Puteh, Kelantan yesterday. The programme was officiated by Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Dr. Ashraf Wajdi Dusuki. Malaysians can catch the biopic Lee Chung Wei, Rise of the Legend from Thursday. For actor Tosh Chan, who plays the national badminton icon in the movie, making the film was an inspiring process and he learned to not give up easily. Despite being a new face in the industry with no prior acting experience, luck was on Chan's side to play the adult Chong Wei character due to his resemblance in terms of build and facial expression with the badminton icon. Meanwhile, Dato Rosham Noor, who portrays coach Miss Bunside, said the movie would inspire moviegoers to keep fighting in the face of adversity. The film also features Singaporean actors Mark Lee, Yeo Yan Yan, Ashley Hua and Jake Ng. Almost 20,000 spectators filled the Bukit Jalil National Stadium on Friday night to watch the exclusive premiere of the 133-minute extended version of the biopic film. Directed by Teng Bi, the 110-minute movie will also be screened in Singapore, China, Macau, Hong Kong and Taiwan. But first, Johor Darul Tazim JDT reclaimed top spot in the Malaysia Super League after recording a hard-fought 1-0 win over Terengganu at the Sultan Ismail Nasiruddin Shah Stadium in Kuala Terengganu last night. The only goal of the game arrived in the 29th minute when Marcos Antonio fired home on the rebound after his initial effort had been blocked. The result, which was also Trunganu's first defeat of the campaign, allowed JDT to leapfrog PKNS FC back into top spot. JDT with 12 points are two points clear of Pahang and PKNS with Trunganu another two points back. Pahang rose to second place on goal difference after steamrolling Negeri Sembilan 4-0 at the Darul Makmur Stadium in Kuantan. Tok Gajah were firmly in control of proceedings at the break with a two-goal cushion courtesy of Patrick Cruz's 27th minute opener and another strike from Francis Forky Doe right at the end of the first half. The foreign duo each netted again in the second half to cap off a fine evening at the office for Dola Sales's charge. On to now top story. Motion on electoral redelineation to be tabled at the current Dewan Rakyat sitting. News on 2 will be back at 7 p.m. tonight with more updates from around the world. Till then, I'm Cynthia Marilyn Arthur. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant day.